You are welcome to another video of Juniper Security Associate course. In this section, I will talk about Juniper SRX policy-based IPsec VPN configuration. There are two methods of site-to-site -site IPsec VPN implementation. Policy-based, which will be discussed in this section, and route-based IPsec VPN configuration, which is the discussion of the next section. Policy-based and route-based are two methods to implement site-to-site -site IPsec VPN in Juniper SIX devices and also in Cisco devices. In Cisco device, policy base is called CryptoMap IPsec VPN implementation. In policy based IPsec configuration, unlike route based IPsec configuration, we don't configure a virtual interface for the tunnel. We send interesting traffic to the IPsec VPN by configuring a policy. The advantage of configuring a virtual interface for IPsec tunnel is that we can configure whatever feature that we configure in other interfaces. For example, if we configure a virtual interface for IPsec VPN, we can configure routing, access list, quality of service, and also multicasting within the virtual interface. With policy-based IPsec VPN, we don't have most of these features. Therefore, what we learn in this section is an old method that is mainly used only to learn how to configure IPsec VPN. However, most of the concepts discussed in this section are the same also in the route-based IPsec VPN configuration, which will be discussed in the next section. This is the topology that we will use in this section to configure policy-based IPsec VPN. There are two Juniper SX devices with the name of Virtual SX1 and Virtual SX2. These two devices are connected to each other directly and through the interface Giga Ethernet 000 in the subnet 192.168.1 slash 24 and in untrust zone. The IP address of virtual SX1 is 251 and the other side 252. Virtual SX1 is connected to the LAN network through the interface Giga Ethernet 001 and in the trust zone, the IP address 172.16.1.24 is configured for this subnet. In virtual SX2, the LAN interface in the trust zone is simulated using loopback interface. And in the subnet, 172.16.2.24. It is important to know that there is no route configured in virtual SX devices to reach LAN networks. In other words, the subnet 172.16.1 and 2 cannot connect to each other without IPsec VPN tunnel. Before starting IPsec configuration, it's not bad to review the current basic configuration of virtual SX devices. In the first lines, the hostname and the IP address of interfaces are configured according to the topology. Then interfaces are added to the appropriate zone. All system services and protocol traffic are permitted to the virtual SIX devices with host inbound traffic command. I've allowed everything for the simplicity, but it's not recommended in the real environment for the security reasons. I allowed also IKE in a separate line in the untrust interface. It was not necessary here since I allowed all protocol and system service traffic. I wanted only to show that for IPsec connectivity, we need to allow IKE to the Juniper SRX devices. Then we have two policies with the name of default permit. The both policies name are default permit from trust to the untrust and from untrust to the trust zone and permit everything source address any destination address any application any and then permit this is also true for the other policy here i prepared a diagram which shows configuration steps of policy based ipsec vpn there are three steps to be configured to create an IPsec VPN. IKE phase one to negotiate IKE security association. IKE phase two to negotiate IPsec security association. 
and create a policy to send interesting traffic over IPsec VPN funnel. As you can see in the figure, in IK phase one, we have three sub steps configuration. First, we configure as many security proposals that we want to accept for the secure connectivity. This step is not necessary and optional since by default there are some proposals pre-configured in Juniper SRX devices. But if you want to configure, there are five main options to configure. Which authentication methods are going to be used? We have two main types. HMAC, which use pre-shared key, in which authentication key must be configured manually in both sides of IPsec VPN tunnel. And the second method, digital signature. In this course, we will use only pre-shared key method. Diffie-Hellman group, which negotiate encryption key dynamically. Authentication algorithm, which can be MD5, SHA-1, or SHA-2 versions. The algorithm to use for encryption. And finally, the lifetime in which encryption key must be renegotiated. We will configure a name for IKE proposal. In the second step, we configure IKE policy. In IKE policy, we decide if we use main mode or aggressive mode. As we have explained in the previous section, we use aggressive mode in remote access VPN connection. In site-to-site -site VPN connection, we use main mode IKE. If we have chosen pre-shared key authentication method in any of IKE proposals, then authentication key itself must be configured in IKE policy. And finally, the configured IKE proposal must be called in IKE policy. In the third step, we configure IKE gateway, the IP address of the other side of the VPN tunnel. In side-to-side -side VPN tunnel, the IP address of tunnel endpoints must be routable, and there must be already connectivity between VPN endpoints. Then we configure the outgoing interface of VPN tunnel. Finally, the configured IKE policy must be called in IKE gateway configuration to complete the chain of IKE phase one configuration. In the second step of policy-based IPsec VPN, we configure IKE phase two or IPsec security association. This step similar to IKE phase one has also three sub steps to configure IPsec proposal, IPsec policy, and IPsec VPN configuration. In IPsec proposal, we choose which IPsec protocol to be used for secure connectivity, AH or ESP. For AH, only authentication algorithm must be configured. For ESP, both encryption and authentication algorithm must be configured. In IPsec policy, we choose the configured IPsec proposal. As you know, encryption key negotiated by Diffie-Hellman group in IKE phase one can also be used for encryption of data traffic, but as an option, you can configure PFS in which encryption key is renegotiated by Diffie-Hellman group. Finally, in IPsec VPN, IKE gateway and IPsec policy will be tied in which connect IKE phase one and IKE phase two to, to each other. In IPsec VPN, there is another option. If IPsec VPN tunnel must be created immediately or whenever a traffic comes. In the final step of policy-based IPsec VPN, we configure send and receive policy to send or receive interesting traffic over IPsec VPN tunnel. But configuring interesting traffic, you can specify that only a subset of traffic between sites should be sent over configured IPsec tunnel, especially traffic that are not by itself secure. For example, sending SSH and HTTPS traffic over an IPsec tunnel only increase device utilization. In a normal case, send and receive policy are exactly reverse of each other, and to make them bidirectional, 
to avoid the unidirectional security association we can use pair policy keyword between these two policies these are the configuration that i've already prepared for policy based ipsec vpn tunnel according to the explanation given in the diagram the configuration are, they are self explanatory so i will quickly just review the configuration the first three configuration groups are related to ike phase one or ike security association in the first section we configure ike proposal with the name of ike proposal one authentication method pre-shared key dplman group version two authentication algorithm sha1 encryption algorithm aes and the lifetime of one day are configured in the proposal then we configure ike main mode for the policy with the name of ike policy one then we configure the ip address of 192 168 1 252 as the vpn gateway with the name of virtual srx2 and giga ethernet 000 as outgoing interface these three sections are chained together with each section's name called in the next section as shown previously in the diagram the next three configuration groups are related to ike phase 2 or ipsec security association we configure ipsec proposal esp with authentication algorithm hmac shavan and encryption algorithm aes as an ipsec proposal with the name of ipsec proposal one then we configure ipsec policy name ipsec policy one pfs or perfect forward secrecy is enabled in this policy therefore encryption key is renegotiated in phase two Finally, we configure IPsec VPN with the name of Virtual SX1, Virtual SX2, which IKE Phase 1 gateway with the name of Virtual SX2 is binded and tied to the IPsec policy with the name of IPsec policy 1. Therefore, all configurations are tied to each other. We also configure that IPsec VPN tunnel be established immediately and does not need to wait for interesting traffic in the next four groups of configuration we configure two policies from trust to the untrust zone and the other from untrust zone to the trust zone with the names of send vpn traffic and receive vpn traffic these two policies are inserted before default permit policies in each policy we configure interesting traffic to be routed through ipsec vpn tunnel interesting traffic of send vpn traffic and receive vpn traffic are exactly reverse of each other these two policies are also paired to each other through pair policy keyword which we have already explained about the last line of the configuration in which I have not displayed in the diagram is to decrease the segment size of packets to a smaller size so that when IPsec header is added to the packet, the packet size will not be bigger than 1500 bytes. Otherwise, big packets must be fragmented in the path which decrease the performance of the communication or must be dropped when they are not allowed to be fragmented the command is very important otherwise you will notice that you have no problem for example with connectivity of the ping connection since the packet size are small but some applications are disrupted over ipsec vpn tunnel since packet size are big and they are not allowed to be fragmented the same these commands must be also configured in the second juniper srx now we can copy and paste the configuration to the srx devices this is the configuration for virtual srx one and then paste and then commit similar configuration of prepared for the second virtual srx device 
copy and then for virtual SRX2 and then paste and then commit and after copying and committing the configuration we hope that the connectivity between two LAN softness 172.16.1 and two over IPsec VPN is established now how we can test and monitor IPsec VPN tunnel connectivity first we send traffic from the subnet 172.16.1 to the subnet 2 to make sure that the connectivity is established with ping command and also with trace route command since we have not created any route between these two subnets the connectivity between these two subnet must be certainly through IPsec VPN tunnel but to make sure we have some IPsec specific monitoring commands the command is starting with show security IKE or for monitoring of IKE phase 1 negotiation and the command is starting with show security IPsec are for monitoring of IKE phase 2 negotiation. With command show security IKE security association without and with detail keyword, we monitor IKE phase 1 negotiation. The output must show that IKE phase 1 is up. The details output also shows the parameters configured and negotiated in IKE phase 1. And the command show security IPsec, security association, without and with detail keyword. It shows the negotiation result of phase 2 negotiation. In the output of these commands, you can also make sure if phase two negotiation is successfully completed. You can also see the negotiated parameters and policy. Another important parameter that you can see in the result of these commands are inbound and outbound SPI. Here, inbound SPI and outbound. SPI which we already talked about in the previous section and the theory of IPsec VPN tunnel still to make sure the traffic are forwarding through the IPsec tunnel you can send traffic between two subnets and then with command show security IPsec and statistics make sure if the number of packets sending and receiving through IPsec tunnel are increasing for example now encrypted packet 21 and decrypted packet 21 and we send again traffic with pin command 1 2 3 4 and again winter the command and the number of encrypted and decrypted packet has changed from 21 to 25 we can make sure that traffic are actually forwarded and transferred through IPsec VPN tunnel.